Last week, we took on the big task of saving the world's cleanest 996 Turbo. Okay, it's probably not the world's cleanest, but it's a very clean 996 Turbo. This car was involved in a heavy front end accident. Another body shop did the structural work for us. And in the last video, we spent time repairing the used panels going on this car, making sure everything gapped up correctly, and we got it into primer. So in this video, we're gonna go even farther. We're gonna get this thing painted. And we're also going to customize the front bumper using real OEM GT2 Porsche parts. That's a, that's a fighting word, man. <laughs> Getting Chick-fil-A with Albie. I need my frosted lemonade. Oh, you don't even wanna know. Did you get frosted lemonade? <laughs> You did, didn't you? <laughs> You're fired. So what I'm doing here is I'm jamming out the parts. It means I'm going to just spray the underside of the hood with paint and clear. I'm going to paint the jams of the fender. Basically the areas that when we paint the car with the fully assembled, I would not be the good paint too. We do this because I want my metallic to lay nicely on the car and also because if I painted things off the car and then tried to blend in this booth, which is not very large, could be catastrophic. This is what we've just decided is the best. So what I'm doing it now is I'm back taping it. This hood, I'm gonna cover it in paper, then I flip it, so I don't wanna get like a ton of overspray on the primer. Getting clear overspray off of primer before you block the primer, or even after you block the primer, is just a complete pain in the nuts. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna play that game. I'd rather spend 10 minutes masking these, the fender and hood than, you know, an extra 30 minutes and potentially having a big problem trying to sand over. The clear. Don't worry, Logan, I got this. You can just stand there. Watch. All right, yep, I will. I got this, I got this. Don't got it, don't got it! <laughs> ah! Let's base this thing. I'm gonna hit this with some guide coat quick. We're gonna block her out. We're sealing all this, so I'm gonna hit with four. I'm just gonna straight to four hundred grit. Um, this is the painting process. This is how we paint our cars here. <laughs> this is my uh, initial base coat. <laughs> So I got the primer blocked out to 400, which is the right grit for sealing over with the products we use. Now I'm going around the gray scotch bright and just hit all these edges and scuff a little bit into the paint that we already put on it so that it'll adhere and not peel off because we're going to spray paint, spray paint. <laughs> we're going to paint this all assembled and I'm going to back tape it all, but I want to make sure that the base clear thing can kind of wrap around a little bit and melt in. So this is the original bumper, and as you can see, it's had, it's had some better days. Uh, and what you can also see is that I cut a hole in this bumper originally. And that was years ago, I cut a hole here to support the OEM GT2 grill. So I have a new grill here, and proof that it is a OEM part. It says Porsche on it right there, look at that, woo! So, we're gonna do the same thing all over again. I'm gonna cut a big hole in this brand new bumper. Which, brand new Porsche parts are not cheap. In case you didn't know that, Logan. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna get this on here, we're gonna stencil it up and uh, cut away. Step one, remove the sticker. Step two. 
I'm using a pencil because an ink saw would bleed into the primer and it'll show up in the paint. Maybe we don't want that. Not in my house. I think, I think we're ready to do the thing, Logan. Give the old chop a chop. Show his boss. <laughs> Show him you mean business. <laughs> Keep going this like it's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, like. <laughs> Do it. All the uh... <laughs> I, so, I, didn't, I didn't even think about it! <laughs> oh my gosh! All the uh, main drill holes have been made. So these are all like the... These have to go through. They're all located. So now it's the cut, cut the adjoining parts out, which should totally go fine. No issues will happen in this process. I am a professional! <laughs> what do you think the blade just flies out? <laughs> yeah. Pro tip, whenever you're cutting anything that's like one of these urethane, polyurethane, where the heck it is, bumpers, use a very low speed. This is a higher speed cut, and you'll see that it actually melted the plastic more than anything else. This is a lower speed cut, and it actually like chewed it out instead of uh, melting it. That's what I want. This isn't a big deal, but it'll become a mess if you keep going. Could heat the blade up. When the blade gets hot from the friction, it's gonna create some problems for you. If you go nice and slow, keep your blade as slow as it possibly can go, like that. I would actually cut it and rather than turning a hot knife that mm -hmm. schmears through that way. There's your tip of the day. I guess so. You better guess so. Hey. Ah! <laughs> Listen here, my guy. You probably did something to deserve that. <laughs> it's oddly quiet out here. And I was getting reactions to me saying random jokes, so I knew something was wrong. <laughs> it's very hard to do while holding a mushroom, but, you know, Important. gotta stay strapped. Hey, watch for aiming that thing. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> We're in the back of the head! Oh my god. Oh my god. You always too quiet. I can't. We need to get more of these. <laughs> Did I break a rule by doing this? Tony didn't say anything about me shooting you guys with Nerf guns. I also need to recant something that I've been saying wrong this entire video because I wasn't really thinking about what I was saying, which is not surprising to many of you, I'm sure. <laughs> um, this is a 997 GT3 vent. For some reason, I kept thinking the words 996 GT2, which is not right at all. So there's a little ding right here, which is not related to the accident whatsoever, nor is it on the estimate. However, I don't like painting over previous damage, especially when it's this simple. So we're gonna go ahead and help the customer out for free and just kind of clean that up really quick. A little skim of polyester there and uh, that'll go away. Cause I could still paint that, dust that, you know, dust a tiny little primer and paint that with the rest of this and still keep a blend here, so. So this dustless sanding system showed up after we were done sanding our primer and everything else in this video. So unfortunately, I did not get to use it this time. However, I wanted to say that we're giving away a free set of the Eastwood Contour DSB sanding blocks. These blocks attach to your shop bag and allow you to sand without getting 
dust all over your shop, which is amazing for people like us who don't have a dustless sanding system already. So like any giveaway we do, we're going to do what's called a comment prompt. Over the next two videos, you can get one entry each video by commenting along and answering a question. This week, comment down below what you would use the Contour and DSB sanding system on, whether it's your own personal project, if you work at a shop, if it's home improvement, you wanna to try to sand some drywall with this, I'm sure you could. Let us know down below. Your comment gets you one entry towards this giveaway. Next week, we'll have another entry prompt. And then the third week, we will be giving away announcing the winner. Unfortunately, this giveaway is limited to the continental 48 United States because of shipping reasons. So if you're outside of that, I apologize. We will have giveaways in the future that will be worldwide. So comment down below. Let us know what you do with this block. And I'm going to get back to sanding with lots of dust. Look, it's like the eye of Sauron. He's watching us, the little people. He's watching you. Oh my god. <laughs> I have like Sonic and I lost all my rings, but instead they're just, they're just happy, happy used Rolox. <laughs>
<laughs> you like my paint suit? Yeah, definitely. Pray for anything. Don't worry, I'll put, it, I'll, I'll put it on later. I'm not worried about it with the sealer. Sealer? <laughs> no, I haven't painted in a very long time. I'm like a little nervous. <sighs> like, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe a little nervous. It'll, it'll be fine. Would you like some milk? Oh, it looks please. like like old milk. <laughs> mm. So what this is is basically known as a clear base. Well, in painting in general, it's used for spraying your blend areas of what's not getting any base coat. Because I'm blending the door and I'm blending the fender. We do this so that when you spray your base down, there is a layer here that kind of melts in with it. Otherwise, it looks like your base is floating over the other base with the clear. You get this what's called a swimming pool effect, where you like your the metallic in the base one that will make shadows and it'll look really weird. This will eliminate that. The magic milk. A little uh, bonus tip, if you use this stuff and you mix in a little bit of your base to it, if you need to have trouble with a blend, like you have a color you think it might not blend very well, mix this with your base, like one-to-one-ish. Do it in between your blend and the clear base area. Melts it right in. Now this is the time, if I have any problems with what I've sprayed, this is the time to handle it. So if I find any spots of pinholes, dirt, uh, maybe like a little bit of like mapping from something, I could take some sandpaper, I can very lightly sand it, let the paper fall to the floor, clean it off, and then base over it. Um, I can also do that in the base coat stage. However, from what I can see, I think we're pretty good. I saw her on again. Yep, he's back, he's watching. <laughs> this next trick is a pro gamer move. Sun gun, and uh, make sure I didn't miss anything. My coverage is good, and I think it does. Look at that. No primer showing through. This metallic looks like it laid nicely. Gonna tack it, obviously. I don't think that we uh, we did it, Logan. I've never had that happen before. Is that a problem? <laughs> it shouldn't happen, it's expensive. So, put that back on there. Mm. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> now it's for the, the scary part. Cross your fingers from the other side of the internet so I don't get any runs because it's been a minute. And painting around the fuel door in these cars and like the bottom sides of like the doors and whatnot where it like kind of curves back around, I like the sag. So fingers crossed. I'm gonna put two, two coats of this on and we should be good. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs>
I don't care if you're the most experienced painter or a novice. Runs happen, and unfortunately, this is like, this is more than a run, this is a freaking curtain, I think, I made here. Um, Porsche bumpers are extremely hard, at least for me anyway, because they have a wrap around that overhangs, so you have a lot of problems with just clear not wanting to stick, and also they have lots of weird sharp lines, and this sharp line got me pretty good here. And ironically, I did the exact same thing on the other side as well, so apparently I'm very consistent in how I sprayed it because it's the exact it's the exact same. So we're gonna show you how I get runs out of clear. Thankfully, this is entirely in the clear, so it's completely savable, and I can do it in a reasonable amount of time using tape, a guide coat, and some wet sanding. I can protect my edges. That's why I have it ever so slightly wrapped on there. Guide coat can be used for more than just primer and filler. That's what make me sure I really get this run completely out. Texted Tony to come over really quick and he said, this won't be sitting in the box too long. <laughs> he's, he's ready for pranks. The funny thing is that I told him the balls in his court. I'm not gonna prank him again until he pranks me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the bumper's assembled. We are still missing a couple parts from uh, ye old motherland. So, but we're gonna slap it together quick and make sure everything fits and is copacetic. I know that we still have to put the cooling system together and that'll happen eventually, but right now we're worried about the bodywork. So I'm gonna slap it together here and see what it looks like. They sent us the wrong headlight. And look how beat up it is, look at that. Oh yeah, it's fixable. Sure. <laughs> but for the sake of the end of this video, I'm just thinking looking like it's a cohesive vehicle. We're just gonna, just, just, just gonna, you know, it's gonna. Yeah, there we go. Look, we're done. Look, it's a whole car now. It's it's all done. <laughs> Now don't worry, next week we'll be back on the 928 project. Which I'm gonna run at, which is all dusty right now, it's fine. We'll be back on this project. We're going to work on the front bumper plug. So check that out next week when we drop it on Saturday. As always, thanks for your support, guys, and we'll catch you next week. <laughs> Again. I'm, I'm, I'm putting too much time into this, I think. <laughs> You're getting way too into this. Huh? Look at that, we got. Prolapse racing. Oh wait, this is going in front of the front of the track too. If we're gonna pitch this idea to Tony, he needs to, to see, see the, full it, the full vision. Prolapse racing. <laughs> that that is a shirt I would wear <laughs> to you know a wedding, <laughs> a funeral. That's that's it. That's the sauce right there. <laughs>